Hey there, this is Tyler from WTFX, and today we're looking at two different distorts and the differences between them. Let's dive in. Corner Pin and CC Power Pin. Corner Pin allows you to easily manipulate an image by moving its four corners anywhere you want. CC Power Pin does this too, but offers some additional controls that make it a bit more... powerful. Oh, really? No, 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 stop, sit down. Here we have Pierce Posnan. And let's say you want to apply this picture of him to the side of this building. It's pretty easy. Once you apply corner pin, you'll see that you have these four controls in the effects panel. Upper left, upper right, lower left, and lower right. The pins are represented by the circles located at each corner of the image they're being applied to. We can move these corner pins three ways. Grab the pin and drag it where we want it to go, slide the X and Y coordinates of each corner, or click on the bullseye and click again where we want it to go. So let's line up that image to the side of the building. There we go. But let's say you realize that you need to make some tweaks to the corner pins because they're not lined up perfectly. Like there. Well, you would need to move the corner pins individually while being very careful to make sure that all the sides stay where they need to go to preserve that perspective. But this is where I feel CC Power Pin excels. CC Power Pin will be very helpful if you're familiar with the principles of perspective and how vanishing points work, and you can see that once I begin to manipulate the corners of the image, these yellow lines appear. As we move them around more, you can see that they show where the vanishing points would be. This tool is very helpful if you're trying to line up footage and want that perspective to be correct. Now to truly be able to compare these two, we need to line up the corners exactly where they were with the corner pin and that unsightly edge. The first thing to notice when anything is in perspective is how the graphic can look off center. And even though we know Pierce Posnan is in the center, we may need to cheat it as there appears to be too much room over here on the right hand side. We're able to confirm that he is in the middle, however, because of the yellow box up here in the top left corner. Once we click this, we'll be able to see two more yellow lines form that create an intersection showing exactly where the center is. This leads us to perspective. The perspective control ranges from 0 to 100% and defaults at 100. As we move the number closer to 0, we can see that Pierce appears to move closer to the right hand side away from the vanishing point. Thus, we're able to control his exact position. As for cleaning up that unsightly edge. There are two ways we can correct this with minimal effort. The first has to do with these yellow vanishing point lines. When we hover the cursor over any edge, we can see that it turns to arrows. By click and dragging, we can move the edge of the image while keeping within the correct perspective. The other option is expansion. When we twirl down expansion, we're given four new options, top, left, right, and bottom. If we need to expand this left edge here, we can select left expansion and increase the number to make it go towards the vanishing point, or negatively expand it to make it go in the other direction. Just like my friends when they see me on the street. Am I right? Oh, stop! Stop! Please note that these numbers are in percentages, so if we change the top to 100, you'll see that it doubles in height. These expansion controls default at zero, but they max out at 200. The final control is unstretch. Unstretch is a pretty interesting control because it stretches and warps the footage, but in a way that may not be expected. As we've established, when we move the corners around, you can see that there is a yellow box linking all the pins. When I turn off the effect, we can see that that box remains. How unstretch works is that it takes these points exactly where they are and stretches them to the footage boundaries represented here. So let's say we want a close-up of just the eyes. I simply need to move the corner pins to surround the eye area. Then, once I check unstretch and turn the effect back on, we will see nothing but the cat's eyes within the footage boundaries. Boom! Cat eyes. Like I said, it took the area confined within this yellow box and stretched it to the footage boundaries. So whether you like the perspective guidelines provided by CC Power Pen, or the simplicity of Corner Pen, I think there's one thing we all can agree on. This certainly has given us a new perspective on the CC power of Corner Pinning. Thanks for watching. I am so sorry for what you just watched. See that big red subscribe button? Definitely don't click that and don't hit the bell icon either because doing either of those will let you know when we upload new content. And you see those two clips of the other videos that we made? 
you don't want to check those out either. Just steer clear of them. I mean, you, you just watch one of our videos. That's why. In fact, what you may even want to do is, is just shut down your computer. If you live near a canal or a river, maybe even take the computer and just throw it in one of them. 